here with Dim Lights alum. You've seen her on Verses and Flow, at Rhetoric, at Nationals, first lady and co-host of Lion Like Mind State, here with Treje M. Powers. Thank you for being a part of this, fam. Thank you so much for having me. This is so dope what you guys are doing. I really appreciate you guys just continuing to build community. I'm excited to be here, for real. Bless, I appreciate you. I already know what you've been doing, but let the viewers know what you've been doing to stay active with your art. Well, one, I've been part-time homeschooling my two boys, but aside from that, I've been able to do the Lion Like Mind State's virtual open mic on Saturdays on IG Live, and then, you know, I've been doing some writing, so I don't know, I might have a book after all this is said and done, and I think I'm overdue, so. Dope, dope, quarantine book. Be sure to go follow her at Trejm Powers and be sure to follow Lion Like Art Community to stay up to date with their IG Live open mic and all the events they're throwing. And now this is Trejm Powers off page. Let's get it. We're more beautiful than a white rose because you bloomed every time you laughed. You loved to bake bloodlines in the bottoms of our bellies so you cooked often. Chitlins, collard greens, black eyed peas, your German chocolate cake is my favorite to this day. Grandma, you cooked as if you understood that soul food has nothing to do with the color of your skin. Your skin was vanilla, but your soul was cocoa. My blonde haired, blue eyed reminder of Jim Crow family values. You had a heart rooted in German heritage and Holocaust histories, but your childhood was fertilized by prejudice, you see. Great granddaddy. Couldn't love a daughter who loved niggers, so he quickly clipped you from his family tree. So because of him, I hate being called things like light skin, red bone, high yellow, or any other color-coded connotation of a complexion that is evidence of Indian, African, and German blend. See, these are labels and markings of a great granddaddy who would have spit on me faster than a grand dragon if he saw me in the streets. But I remember visiting you in the nursing home. It smelled of dying love and forgotten family ties, but I didn't mind the smell. It was the sight of your fading smile. I didn't understand. My very own Anne Frank, you hid in an attic of strength and stubbornness. You hid your war with cancer well, so when Big Tobacco gave you gas chamber lungs, I watched ICUs turn concentration camps as you were treated according to the strength of your insurance policy while we argued outside with doctors trying to prove that we were your family and I never concentrated on things like that till now. You see, I was a freshman in college when you died learning how to become a woman who bloomed into a lady pollinated by infidelity like you. I lived wildly. So when my mother planted a family of white rose bushes in the front yard. They seemed such an appropriate choice. You were our white rose, a reminder that even the most delicate of beauties need strong edges and sharp edges to survive, but no one had a stronger will than you to survive. So when the cancer made your hair shed like wilting petals and the chemo faded your vanilla scent into sour sickness, I promised never to forget you, never to forget your laugh, your cooking, your smile, or even the fact that you loved earth-flavored men and birthed sand-colored children because you knew families needed strong foundations. So on my wedding day, I honored your legacy. I carried a bouquet of white roses with the roots and dirt still dangling so no one would ever forget that even the whitest of roses have brown roots. Damn, so